housing is an internationally recognized human right um, from the UN Declaration of Human Rights, Article 25. The UK government and the Irish government have both signed up to the International Covenant of Economic and Social and Cultural Rights, and that has a similar right, which again recognizes the right to housing. And these are part of a wider economic and social rights. Homelessness is perhaps the most obvious symptom of social exclusion and therefore social injustice within society in the United Kingdom at present. But I think the difficulty for us in Northern Ireland is that housing has not been prioritised. I've been working over 30 years now in housing, both for Housing Association and for the Council for the Homeless. And in all of that time, I have seen consistent, inadequate investment in housing. I believe that of all of the human rights, there are five that are critically important. That's access to food, access to healthcare, access to education and work, and access to a good quality stable home. I believe that if you don't have a stable roof over your head, then it's really difficult to hold other aspects of your life together. The statistics in Northern Ireland currently are very grim. Uh, the housing executive has a waiting list of over 37,000 people on it at the moment. Um, in addition, two-thirds of those people, over 22,500, are people who are recognised in housing stress. It is said that we probably need around about 6,000 social homes per year in order to meet existing need, which is the 40,000 households sitting on the urgent housing waiting list and yet we are probably only going to build about 2,000 per year. And as we increase our dependency upon the private rented sector, we also increase the possibility of rough sleeping, of people spending very long times in temporary accommodation. And I'll give you an example. One of our major providers of temporary accommodation in Northern Ireland has said over the last year, where most people would have stayed 13 weeks in their accommodation, that has increased to 18 months is what is going to happen in regard to universal credit and the other changes that have happened around welfare reform imposed by a Tory government. The truth is that in our society more and more people are faced with homelessness and more and more individuals and families are living under the threat of homelessness and that is only going to get worse with the welfare cuts that are hurtling down the track towards us. Homeless providers get money via housing benefit, which is already under pressure, but also through a program called Supporting People. The Supporting People program is the absolute lifeline for these services in ensuring that they have qualified staff to offer service and the best support that a homeless person needs at a time of crisis. The Supporting People program is a crucial part of housing policy and therefore preserving and enhancing that program is absolutely vital. It's really important that people call on those who are in positions of authority and power to make sure that this funding is ring-fenced because supporting people helps the most vulnerable in our society stay at home and it's only right that they receive that support. What happened in supporting people's funding was cut, people with addictions and dual addictions and secondary mental health issues such as depression, bipolar, schizophrenia, post-traumatic stress, suicidal thoughts, self-harm. Some of these people have been abused in their childhood, for, should be um, physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional abuse financial abuse, 
Some come from dysfunctional families and coming from different places. Um, some are rough sleepers who have been on the streets for a long time. These are transient people with a very chaotic lifestyle. Being homeless is unimaginative to somebody who's never been. It is so vulnerable to the world in general, the fear that you have, no future. You can't see anything but your present moment, which is an uncomfortable way to live. I have no house to go to, absolutely homeless. Uh, so where am I going to go? And just lucky enough, uh, I got in contact, I was put in contact uh, with a guy from uh, Supporting People who put me in the line to uh, Rosemont House. Uh, and I've been there since uh, the past two and a half years. Uh, it's done an awful lot for me over the past two and a half years. Uh, and it's, it's got me back on the, the list again for the housing executive. I became homeless again. about two months ago and uh, I didn't have money for deposits for flats and stuff. There's no way I could get that kind of money together and uh, uh, I became homeless due to my alcoholism, you know, and uh, I can't remember most of the reasons why, but uh, the only option really left for me was to go back into the hostels I'd been in before, the type of hostels. and. Uh, you know, every time I ended up in them hostels, I'd always drank again. You know, the staff and people done the best they could, but but uh, limited resources and a lot of times limited experience. I've been landing in the streets from 2014, you know, and uh, it's not nice. You know, it's terrible the way people walk by you. You know, people, there are always good people out there that help me an awful lot. I live in hostel. I'm homeless, but now I'm in good place. And uh, this what happened to me can happen to everyone. I had good job. I had house. I had partner. But something happened in my, my personal life and uh, it was too hard for me. I had nervous collapse and this was beginning my bad journey. Um, most of the time I was scared, you know, very, very scared and um, lonely, very, very lonely. Street is not a place for, for anyone. I was full of fear on the street. I've helped my mental health a lot, you know, with uh, the family orientation that there is here, you know. You feel part of a, a family, you know. It's not just like a hostel environment or a rehab environment. It's like, a, it's like everyone in here is part of your family, and including the staff, like, you know, the band that we're backwards to help you. Well, obviously, from the start, it's given me a bed. Um, I'm not out in the normal in the streets, and it's helped me get my self confidence back. Uh, it's, it's helped me stay where, it is, where I need to be. Um, doing courses the next turn and going out different, meeting different people. It's, it's been a big, it's, it's been a lifesaver for me. Like Rosemary House is, well, I, I wouldn't, Daphne would not be sitting here. I would be with my father and him. Without Rosemary House, I would be, I would, I would be actually lying on Castle Street, drinking, you know, and with the rest of the boys, where I come from. You know, I don't want to go back there again. You know, so. Uh, uh, at the minute, Rosemount House is, has been my lifeline. It's been a miracle for me, it has saved my life. I'm now off the, the alcohol for the past two and a half years, which is a really good gain for me. They, they've done an awful lot for me. They say they've got me back on the housing list. Uh, anything I need, I have, I have a lot of uh, medical appointments to do and dealing with hospitals and operations and things. 
everything is done for me in Rosemount House. Uh, I just couldn't ask for any more. I room in Rosemount House. And, uh, I've been there about two weeks now. The staff are incredible. All the other hostels I'd been in, the staff mostly seemed to be just doing a, a job, but in Rosemount, the, the staff genuinely seemed to occur. For two years, uh, I've been a resident in Rosemount, and I've had one offer which wasn't conducive to my needs, to say. But as I look upon the skyline of Belfast today, there's cranes, there's work going on. These are for hotels. These aren't for an infrastructure of housing. To deal with 57-year-old men or men of any age, we are very vulnerable today. That needs to be addressed before they end up in places like Rosemount House, Cancelio's, Carlisle House, the Welcome Centre, which does a great job, the Morningstar down the street does a great job, Salvation Army. So rather than have the cuts, we need the support and we need the proper funding. Rosemount and other organisations give hope. Let's not take it away from them before it's too late. I'm sure for many of our homeless people it feels as if they are a David in the face of a Goliath and that's the government departments. It's very important that we listen to people who are living with homelessness or under the threat of it because they know exactly what the issues are, they know exactly what help they need. But in situations where they can't speak up for themselves for whatever reason then there's a responsibility on you and me to speak out for them on their behalf. Campaigning organisations are really crucial to this and there are a number of really good organisations in Northern Ireland who advocate on behalf of people who are homeless and in housing need. But equally important is the fact that we need to hear from people uh, who are homeless and in housing need themselves. And those initiatives where the voice of the person affected by the issue is heard is really important. We are campaigning to government to give us sufficient money to maintain the services that we deliver. And you can get involved too. If you look up, let's keep on supporting people, and it's all about supporting the people, you can get involved, you can support us, you can let our MLAs, our local councillors and our civil servants know that this particular programme is too valuable to lose and much too valuable to lose by death of a thousand cuts. We can all just sit and talk about it, about the importance of creating a socially just society, or we can all do something about it. When I was in the Assembly, I was trying to bring forward a private member's bill. This was a piece of legislation that would put a responsibility on every single government department to tackle homelessness. Because it's not just about bricks and mortar, it's about healthcare, it's about justice, it's about all of those things. And every government department has a responsibility to act urgently to tackle homelessness. I'm trying to do what I can, but you can too. You should be going to your MLAs and to your councillors and you should be asking them a single question. What are you doing to end homelessness?
what I'd like to say to you is that a homeless person is still somebody. And in that context, as a society, let's keep on supporting people.